Okay. Good morning, and welcome to another lecture given by Meridian Soul School of the Highest Learning. First of all, this is a school in our church. Neither are we associated with any religious organizations, Jehovah Witnesses, or any other denomination you have taught in the world today. Now, this school was established in the year of 1931 by Dr. Henry C. Kinley, who had a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh. And the charts you see peculiarly illustrated are results of that divine vision and revelation. I will be explaining the name you see here. Now, Yahweh is the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, which was once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart, so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is up in the source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself, known as the word of son, is Elohim. Now, superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, Yahweh Elohim can only be seen in a divine vision and revelation, as stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then when a Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now when your translators have come across true and correct divine title for Yahweh in shape and form known as Elohim, as you insert the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua, the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Glory as ours, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names, such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a superincorporeal shape and form known as the Word of the Son is Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations, but one spirit as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear reckoning in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Now, my investigation on your part proved to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have taught in the world are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language and did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible written by Heavenly Father, true and correct name, Yahweh and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aim, the primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, we have to find and know Yahweh, I know him as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so called law of nature and population in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Seventh, and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Night to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. That there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. 
intent to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword word is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We have prayer for Dr. Miranda Gonzalez. Scripture lesson by Dr. Vanessa Collins. Scripture lesson will be 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Good morning, class. Let us bow heart and mind for prayer this morning. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we are again thankful for your long suffering, your mercy, and your grace in this last day and time for allowing us to allowing us an opportunity to gather together ourselves in our own mind so that the things that are done in this body are pleasing in thy sight. We are thankful for your long stretched out arm arm to the sons and for allowing us opportunity to see you in your glory and be a recipient of this gift of eternal life. So thankful you woke us this morning in a sound state of mind with our focus, no matter the situation, on thee. So we ask you this morning to continue to be our guard, our shield, and our protection during these perilous times that you have foretold us of and to make us stand and withstand the wiles of the adversary. These and all blessings we ask in thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say hallelujah. Good morning. Scripture lesson for this morning is First Thessalonians 5th chapter. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainer the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For Yahweh hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, acknowledge them which labor among you 
and are over you in Yahweh and at Manishi, and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all. See that none render evil for evil unto anyone, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of Yahweh in Yahshua the Messiah concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Do not neglect the prophecies. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very Elohim of peace sanctify you wholly, so that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by Yahweh that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, be with you. 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter. Hallelujah. All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Carla Carter. I'll be the host slash moderator for this morning's lecture. Our first speaker will be from Reading the Soul, Dr. Shirley Cole. Shirley, if you can unmute yourself for me. morning class mm -hmm. I'm thankful as always to be able to testify to that that Yahweh has revealed unto me there is nothing else that we should be thankful for in this day and time once Yahweh has made us um, has assured us of his existence has assured us of his purpose and um, what Yahweh moved me to uh, has moved me to look at here recently is uh, and this is in continuation as always in continuation to the lecture that he had us all be a partaker of last Sunday, which was ever so beautiful. And um, it was right on time for what I had um, asked for and what I desperately needed because of where, what Yahweh has had me going through. Um, within myself here recently with things that has transpired um, in my life, to say in our lives, because there's more than me involved, but all I could, all I can do is concentrate on or focus in on what Yahweh is, uh, has me in it for, in the situation for. So I'm ever so ever thankful and I really enjoyed last Sunday's class. Uh, I was listening on YouTube, and then, but I had the thought at first of getting on Zoom to share something that Yahweh had showed me, but he told me, no, uh, it's not time. And I understood after I heard what he had to say unto me in last Sunday's class that it wasn't time because he he opened up what it is he wanted me to see or, or added to what he wanted me to see so it wasn't time to share. You have, you have to actually be in where it was with Zer Jeremiah is what I come to find out, his relationship with Yahweh. I've come to find out you have to be in that same place. Whatever I give you to speak, that is what you speak. And when you become conscious of 
the Holy Spirit in you, then it will let you know without a doubt when it's time for you to speak. Uh, however, we're speaking all the time because we're in a spiritual age now. And when one of the when Yahweh gives a revelation to one, whatever it is he wants another to see, they see the same thing. So we don't have to go back and forth and wonder when and how we need to do this. It's just letting go and just, you know, just living, living this purpose with Yahweh. So that being said, um, what I wanted to, and the scripture lesson, what I wanted to get into to share, if, if the spirit is willing, um, and the scripture lesson was right on point to open it up where uh, I was talking about um, let us not sleep, which means, in other words, let us not be unconscious. Let us always be conscious. And then, you know, I'm always talking about the question. So the question is, conscious of what? You know, it's always the question that we have to focus on. And um, she was talking about us being sober. Uh, and putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And, and it pointed out also that Yahweh has not appointed us to wrath. Now, I want you to connect. If you listen to last Sunday's class, and it, it would have been um, very wise to go back and listen to it again because um, then you can really be still within yourself and listen to what Yahweh had to say unto you. Because this is connected to last Sunday's class. He's not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua. No matter what we go through, what he carries us through, and carry is a key word. Because going, you know, it seems like we're going. But I like to look at, he showed me, uh, I like the word carrying me through. Um, that's needful for me to be carried, you know. So um, he has not appointed us to wrath. And that's what was expressed in last Sunday's class. But unto sal to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua, or by the truth. That's what was being preached last Sunday. That when we're looking at it from our perception of this purpose and the operation of it, then yeah, we may think that it's all about the wrath that we are appointed to. No, it's not. That's for the world. That's for those that are lost. That's for those that are ordained to the wrath. And when I said those, get your mind off of off of the flesh, off of looking at somebody that don't know or somebody that does know. We're talking about right. being conscious of the two mysteries in operation at all times. When you talk about the Holy Spirit, when you talk about the satanic spirit, you've got to keep them under the same. The two mysteries are under the one mystery that's being controlled by the one mystery of being controlled by Yahweh. And that keeps us focused on. So when I say those that are appointed to wrath, you look at those that have. You're looking at that mystery of iniquity, I'll put it that way, the operation of it. And those are appointed to carry out that. Just like the Holy Spirit, those that are appointed for the Yahweh place his Holy Spirit in to carry out that mystery of righteousness, you know, but it's all Yahweh working both mysteries. So, but the scripture lesson. And I hope y'all can follow me. And this is why it's important to go back and listen to it so you can be still and see what thus said Yahweh unto you. Because at first you may be listening to somebody, to Yahweh preaching through somebody. But you have to be still and see alone by yourself and hear what Yahweh is saying. That's why it's very important or uh, why 
to listen to it and just settle in and say, okay, Yahweh, I heard what Carla said. I heard what Shirley said, what you said through them. Now, let me just key in a little bit keener, you know, a, a, a little bit closer to, I just use the word keen, keener, so I can hear what you're saying unto me. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and I'm going to get to my point in a minute. Uh, Yahweh has not appointed us to wrath. That's what stuck out, stuck out in my mind as to what Yahweh has put on my heart to share with the brethren my testimony so that if it's according to his will, it can become your testimony because we are of the one body. Um, because there is only one body. Um, I'm going to slow it down because I have so much. It's just so full. Y'all really know what it means to be in love. It's just hard to express it. It's just hard to express it sometimes. You just can't express it sometimes. You know, like when you're in love from a natural standpoint, you can tell somebody, oh, I'm in so much in love with him. And you can tell them that, but they don't know where you are because they don't know what you feel or what you see. You know. So anyway, so y'all be patient with me. Um, and then also in uh, the 24th verse of the scripture that says, he says, faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. That's what the Holy Spirit was trying to get us to see in last Sunday's class. Um, and that's what I saw out of it. And I had to come to it because I was right. being I was being moved, you know. That's why it's great to have a shepherd to keep you in line, a shepherd of the sheep. Keep them right. in line when they, when they may want to stray off and eat a piece of grass here, and they're supposed to be heading to the to the uh barn or wherever they go, you know. So the shepherd will keep them in line on the path that they need to be on. And that's what I saw that Yahweh, because he loves me, because I am a son, because I am of the I am his sheep, one of of the of the flock, that he said, Okay, let's see, let's bring this on back, bring this on back, because what he was carrying me through was for that purpose to get me back on track consciously so. You see, but it was necessary. And as the first speaker said last Sunday, it's not about you doing something right and wrong and all that. It's about Yahweh's purpose doing what it does for his sons. You know, so when he made me see that, okay, you, you've gotten off, off the path just a little bit, but it was necessary. What I'm thankful for is that I was conscious. He made me conscious that I had gotten off of the path. I'm talking about in my mind because of the way I was looking at things. Now, let me show you where, how beautiful this is. When you have a shepherd, when, 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 um, when you're conscious that, that there is an angel there, if an angel be there, or a defender, or a shepherd, that's why he carries us through these things to make us come to know that Faithful is he that calleth you, that he is faithful to his word. We talk about that promise he made to Abraham all the time. We talk about it, but we can't leave it with Abraham. He fulfilled and is still fulfilling his promise that he made to Abraham. But guess what? Put yourself in the place of Abraham. Put yourself in the place of all that great cloud of witnesses and stop keeping them separate from you. Guess what? If you are a son, you're you're in that cloud of witnesses. You are a witness unto Yahweh. You're in the same cloud. So we're right. witness. It's the angels all witnessing unto each other, saying glory, glory, glory unto Yahweh. That's what we're doing. So we have to stay focused of that's what's going on at all times. That we are all witnesses. So 
he has fulfilled. Faithful is he that calleth you. He's faithful to his promise and will always be. And seal that with the Messiah. Y'all just follow me because I'm not. Anyway, um, he fulfilled that with the Messiah when he said, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world, of the age. He's faithful to that promise. So, um, now, um, let me give you a, uh, just a little note on how he, uh, that that he's carried me through, you know, with my mom and, um, going through some health issues and stuff, you know, because it's new to me. You know, I've never dealt with that. I've never had to deal with uh, a loved one going through something that's full of health lives. I've had my own health situations, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I, I, you know, I got this. But then when it's reflected on something that's so close to me, you know, then that's what he used to get me uh, to where I needed to be to see what or to see where I am. You know, Yahweh is always telling us when we look at that tabernacle pattern to always, when you always look at whatever state you're in, where exactly are you in the pattern? Where are you? Are you in the court roundabout, the holy place, or the most holy place? You have to be conscious of that, of where you are at all times. So he used that situation for me to look at. It wasn't about what it appeared to be about, it wasn't about what was going on, you know, like that, that's not what it was about. You had to see, well, what is this truly about? So going that's through right. something, you know, and I had never dealt with it before, loved one. When my daddy died, you know, it was suddenly he was healthy and, and just working all the time in his field, and all of a sudden he just collapsed, you know, and he was gone. So I didn't have to deal with the health issues and wondering about this and wondering about that and what can I do and what about this. I didn't have to deal with it in that situation. So it was new to me in this one, right? So <clears throat> all over the place. Still still looking at Yahweh in my mind to handle it, right? But still I found myself saying, what? You know, what if my mom She's, you know, she's the closest thing to me, you know, besides my husband. So um, what is this? Or what am I going to do? Or what can we do? Or what can I, you know, just all over the place, you know. So I had to be settled. I had to ask for it. Okay, wait. And this isn't where I'm supposed to be. This is not where I want to be. You know, so... Um, he woke me up one morning, well, last Sunday morning, before I got on class. And he said, you know what? I'm talking about in my own voice, y'all. He speaks to me face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And who's closer to you than your own self? You know what I'm saying? So he spoke to me and said, now, if I declare the end from the beginning, then what is there to worry about? What is there to wonder about? What is there to regret? And I opened my eyes. And it's like a weight was lifted. Because I couldn't do nothing with that. If he declared the end from the beginning, me worrying about it was not going to change that. Me regretting something I should have done or couldn't have done, you know, wasn't going to change that. That's right. The fact that everybody is going to have to take off these bodies, my not wanting to deal with that at that point, wasn't going to change that. Because he already has declared the end from the beginning. So you're talking about a weight being lifted, y'all. So I had to go with that. Otherwise, guess what? I was going to remain where I was and go deeper in off the path, further off the path of what I said that I knew and believed. 
So the Holy Spirit being present or being the comforter in me. See, when we talk about Holy Spirit in us, you need to know how that works instead of just saying it. The mm-hmm. comforter, the comforter mm-hmm. or the Holy Spirit in me right. is what put that thing in its place. Mm-hmm. Right, the truth. The truth. Because that is true. Yahweh did declare the end from the beginning. Right, that's he right. Said, I, <clears throat> it, I will also do it. That's the truth. Right. That's the Holy Spirit in me that came mm-hmm. to me mm-hmm. with the truth and presented the truth to me mm-hmm. that I already, that He had already given me. So it has to be given you, first of all. And that I, but guess what, y'all? I truly wasn't standing in it like I was supposed to be. I had to admit that to myself because if I was, I wouldn't have been, you know, tossed to and fro in my mind about the thing. And this is what I saw out of it. If you go to, see, these are things we have to meditate on. You're talking about meditating on things. You're talking about seeing Yahweh or, or waiting on Yahweh to take care, the Yahweh's taking care of everything, Yahweh's going to take care of this. And see, what's that scripture where it says, with their mouths they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now your heart is your, is your, is the way you're looking at things, what you truly believe, what you truly know. You know, so we have to be examined or we have to be tried on these things just like Abraham was. It was accounted unto Abraham for righteousness for believing. However, we're still looking at something last on these slides, y'all. That's why I want you to go back and listen to it. However, Yahweh tried Abraham to make sure that Abraham knew and saw that what he was believing in was real. So that's why Yahweh is carrying us through these things. So we will know for an assurity. Now, um, I won't won't take too much time, uh, but uh, there's so many things that the Holy Spirit brings together for you. And one of the things is the SoundCloud number 31, where he was saying, faith is all right in its place. He said, you will find that without faith, it's impossible to please Yahweh in Hebrews. He said, it's talking about the folks back under the law. Not you. Not you. No. That's right. You have to have faith. Not from that. But he said, he said, see, you have to have a more sure word. Sure. Sure word. Demonstration. That's right. He's right. And how are you going to have that? If we go to uh, Romans, and I'm not going to have a lot of scriptures read. I just point them out to you. Well, Romans 14 and 5 and Romans 4.21. We'll read it those right quick. Um, he said, you have a more sure word. You have to demonstrate, see, see what I'm talking about? Uh, Yahweh, you have you have Yahweh to demonstrate, see what I'm talking about, his own existence. Let's see. Um, it's outside number 31, but I'm not going to read everything that I've typed up, but you can go listen to it. He said, now we have come close to the end and close to the end of this age now until we realize that you have to have a profound knowledge and a comprehensive apprehension of Yahweh. Now, that may seem like too many words. 
But the Holy Spirit also said through him, he said, every word that I use has got some weight behind it. So that means we have to stop. And if we don't understand the words of what he's saying, we have to stop and look them up. That's why he made a dictionary and put the words in it, right? He said, right. you, have to have, you have to have a profound knowledge. He said, uh, profound knowledge and a comprehensive apprehension of Yahweh. Now, knowledge, Yahweh has shown us a long time ago, means that that is known, or it's the sum of what is known. It's the body of truth or information and principles. That's why we're always talking about looking at the principles that Yahweh is showing in all the things and not just leave them on top of the surface and think it's just stuff that's going on. But we have to look at the principles of everything. That's what knowledge means, the sum of what is known, the body of truth. Then he said, you have to have uh, a comprehensive, comprehensive means covering completely or broadly, covering or intended to cover all items or all things. First Corinthians 15, 28, that Yahweh may be all in all. But we got to have the whole, a comprehensive uh, covering completely or broadly. You have to have a comprehensive apprehension Apprehension is the act, and y'all can look these words up because I'm moving. Apprehension is the act or power of perceiving or understanding. Okay, so that's what you have to have in, along with the faith. We're not getting rid of the faith by no means. Because you must have faith, first of all, you know, in Yahweh. Right, that's right. That's what he's pleased in, those that uh, believe and know that he is, right? So he said, so when you have to have a knowledge and a comprehension and apprehension of Yahweh, a comprehension apprehension of Yahweh, it means that as he really is, not like you imagine him to be or somebody said he was. It's not that at all. You have right. to know exactly. now, he said. You have to in know now. Right. right, in all three states. So what do we have to know? It's always the question, right? What is it I have to know, Yahweh? What is it that I have to comprehend? What is it that I have to understand? And Yahweh goes over it all of the time with us, but we... uh he points it out all the time. What we have to know is, and it's a lot that we have to know, but I'm just going to point out some things that he pointed to me, uh, out to me. He just brought up the things, the scriptures that he calls out all the time. And this is still back from last Sunday's class. Um, I'll read what I had you to read first, y'all. I'm sorry. Romans 14 and 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. That's what I wanted to say. Everyone has to be fully persuaded in his own mind. That's right. And that's, and that's what uh, I wanted to point out when he said... Uh, that you have to know something. You have to know something for yourself. Um, and you have to have a more sure word, he said. He said faith is all right in its place. He's not talking about the folks back on the law. He said now you have to have a more sure word. And that's what it took me to. In other words, you have to be fully persuaded in your own mind. Fully persuaded in your own mind. Romans 4.21. Romans 4.21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. That's right. Now, how are you going to be fully persuaded? Fully means lacking... Uh, 
lacking restraint. You're not restrained. You're not putting any restrictions on Yahweh. You're going to be complete, especially in detail or duration or how long it's going to last. See, our perception, and I'm talking about what I had to come to admit within myself. I was unconsciously so putting restraints on Yahweh, limitations on Yahweh, because I had forgotten that he declared the end from the beginning. So I'm thinking, okay, well, some in my mind, I'm talking to you, so, well, something else must be going on. That's what it boiled down to, you know, mm -hmm. that he didn't declare the end from the beginning, because I'm thinking I need to fix something or figure something out or do this or do that or what is this and all that stuff, right? So, uh, in detail or duration as far as fully, you know, uh, complete in detail or duration. Yahweh is faithful. He is he, he is faithful as he that calleth. He's faithful in that. He's fulfilling his promise. It didn't stop with Abraham when you're talking about the duration as far as being complete in duration, one of the definitions of fully. Unconsciously, so I was thinking. In my mind, because I'm thinking something else can be done, I'm thinking in my mind, you know, is where I had it, that he was, uh, he fulfilled his promise to Abraham. But guess what? He's still fulfilling the promise to me. I am of the seed of Abraham. All right. All right. So you got to put it persuaded in your own mind. Mm -hmm. Persuade it. You know what I'm saying? But you got to be fully persuaded in your own mind that he's able to accomplish everything that he has promised you. He, and he, you are the one that he's called. Faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. So why are we thinking that it's something we can do or somebody can do? can do or should have done or what if this and what if we do it this way and all that kind of stuff so I had to admit right within myself or confess with my heart not just with my lips with my heart Yahweh I wasn't, wasn't fully persuaded until you just showed me that you did declare the end from the beginning and that you have purpose and you will also do it and that you are in me willing and doing of your good pleasure. You're in my mama willing and doing your good pleasure. You know, just like one of the brethren testified last Sunday, she had to see that the same spirit that was in her son that had faith in Yahweh, that everything was, was good, that she had to acknowledge that, that same spirit was in her. Just being fully persuaded. And what he has promised, he will do it, and that he's already done it. Mm -hmm. We just get in the way all the time. That's why we get run over. That's right. You, you want to know what's going on? You get run over because you're in the way. The best thing you can do is get in line with his purpose. That's all right. So, so uh, what I was going to is the question that comes to us, knowledge of what? Comprehension of what? So let's go to, then I saw so clearly why this is called so many times. <laughs> let's go to Nehemiah 9 and 6, Acts 17, 24. And of course, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Um, and let's kind of go fat. I mean, Let's kind of uh, stay on course so we can wrap this up. Okay, read, please. Nehemiah 9 and 6. Thou, even thou, art Yahweh alone. Thou my, what, what it is that you need to come to know, that you have to get some knowledge of. Well, before you go to that, the first aim, the, the first what you have to get some knowledge of. The first aim says to find and know Yahweh. The first aim of the school is to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Mm -hmm. 
The sixth A, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's purpose. Not ours. To learn and know and understand the operation of Yahweh's purpose. Right? That's that's what we have to learn, know, and understand before we get to Nehemiah and the other one. So, um, through the dispensations, and they, Yahweh's eternal purpose, that's a part of being, that's the definition of fully. Not, uh, you're not putting any restriction or duration on his purpose. That he declared the end that was declared before the beginning, the end being declared from the beginning. Okay, Nehemiah uh, nine and six. Thou, even thou, art Yahweh alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth, and all things that are therein, the seas, and all that is therein. And thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. So that that within itself sums it up. Yahweh alone. Not you, not with you and me, but Yahweh alone. That's why you have to be one with Yahweh or become conscious of who you are. Right. Because it's not Yahweh. And me and you and him and us that made heaven and the heaven right. of heavens. Right. That's in Acts 17, 24. Acts 17, 24. Yahweh, who made the world and all things therein, seeing. Who did it? Yahweh did. That's right. Read. Yahweh, who made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, he Who's dwelleth. Ruling? In... Who's ruling heaven and earth? Yahweh, Yahweh is. So why are you thinking there's something that you can do? Right. For sure to die? Hmm. Hmm. Right. Seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Man, wait a minute. He don't dwell in temples made with hands. You know, we use that all the time to to uh to, to show forth that he don't dwell in the churches out there, right? Mm -hmm. Then he brought it on down that we had to see that he didn't dwell in the buildings as far as going to learn about Yahweh and IDMR. That's not where he dwells. So the question is, what's the question? Where does he dwell? Where do you dwell, Rabbi? He said, you want to know where I dwell? Come and see. Come and see. Okay, so now you got to get some knowledge. We're talking about getting the knowledge and a comprehensive apprehension of Yahweh's purpose. So we can't leave these words right here. We got to go on into it and look at it. We have to turn aside to see. See, he showed Moses after Moses turned aside to see, or he turned Moses aside to see. And went from his own thoughts. Then he went and showed Moses where he dwelled. Moses didn't know nothing about that before that. You talking about. In a comprehensive knowledge, in a knowledge and a comprehensive apprehension of Yahweh's purpose, that's what's going to keep you talking or living it once you once you understand it, and the Holy Spirit in you that gives you that understanding. That gives you the wisdom and knowledge, which is the stability. That's how you're going to remain stable. That's how you're going to remain 
of being able to walk in line with his purpose. But first you have to get that knowledge. You know, we have to become as babes. We have to, that old man has to die and we have to become as babes. And what do babies do? When they first come into this world, they know nothing. But as they grow, they have to, they start taking on knowledge. That's why you have to have good parents as Yahweh is a good parent to teach them the right way, the right thing. So they start taking on knowledge because if you're doing otherwise, they're going to take that on too. If you're not showing them the right way to go. So we have to become as babes. We have to start taking on the knowledge of Yahweh because eternal life is to know, right? So that's what we have to start taking on. We have to start uh, and then they start a babe starts living that knowledge if you will they start walking in that knowledge because that's the only guide they have is the knowledge that's given them that they take on so we have to become as babes and so we see in that Yahweh is the rule of heaven and earth he dwell not in temples made with hands so where does he dwell question and then you find out by going to Moses' vision, to the law and to the testimony. That's where the light is. That's where the understanding is. Talking about the comprehensive apprehension. That's where it's going to be. That's where Yahweh is going to give you the light of his purpose. That's how he set it up. A man didn't set that up. That's how Yahweh set it up. So you go and you see Moses' vision, right? That he gave to Moses. And he told, he showed Moses where he dwelt. But he had to give him something to show that, or to prove that, that he could comprehend, that he could understand. So if you go to, uh, did I read all the scriptures I had called? Well, we have to be at Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Okay, 46, 9 and 10, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, those were the uh, three things I wanted to keep before us um, that we just read. Nehemiah, Acts 17, 24, and Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. And I'm telling y'all, now I know you have to have your own relationship with Yahweh. But if you need some help, that's what we are doing. We're earnestly contending for the common salvation of all the sons. If you need something to uh, to receive from that great cloud of witnesses, which we all are, that's why we're on these calls. We are a part of the great cloud of witnesses. So take that, not from Shirley, but from one of the witnesses whom Yahweh has set up, that these three things have kept me, have 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 kept me stable and given me some peace. When something, when my mind, when that adversary is knocking on the door or those fire, throwing those fiery darts, he's been taking me to these three scriptures here for me to look at, not just read, to look at and become a living part of me. Nehemiah 9 and 6 and uh, Acts 17, 24. And Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. So you have to start somewhere, y'all. When you're talking about Isaiah 26 and 3, I think it is. He will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. You have to work that. You have to work it, girl. You have to work it. Because when your mind... When you find out that your your mind is all over the place and you're not at peace, you know it when you're not at peace. That smile on your face is not going to, it may fool some people outside of you. But you know within yourself whether you're at peace or not in your mind or your soul is just not resting. So, uh, when you're talking about keeping your mind stayed on Yahweh, I don't care. Don't be trying to say, figure out how, well, how my mind going to stay on Yahweh? What's that mean? Do I need to do this? Do I need to think about this? I need to be still. 
And the Holy Spirit will give you this. Like he gave me these things to keep me stable in these past few weeks, this past month. He took me to them and made me look at them. They're real. Believe it. Do you believe that? It's Yahweh that's ruler of heaven and earth. Do you believe Isaiah 46, 9, and 10? I had to look at them, not just read them. I had to live them. I had to be fully persuaded because I had to admit that I wasn't fully persuaded he declared the end from the beginning. I wasn't fully persuaded that he's in control of everything as I was speaking it. Because if I was, I wouldn't be in all, all over the place and gotten off the, the uh, gotten uh, separated, you know, in my mind from the shepherd. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to see where you are in the tabernacle in order to get back in line with where you're supposed to be in the tabernacle. When you see the abomination of desolation standing where it all not, he said, stand in the holy place. But look, the Holy Spirit also said through the founders to go with what I just read in this uh, sound cloud. Faith is all right in this place. Standing in the holy place is all right in this place. But through the founder, he also said this. Stand in the holy place, but don't stay there. You got to move. That's right. That's right. So the girl right. couldn't stay out in the wilderness. Right, right. Couldn't stay there. The whole the, the high priest couldn't stay in the most holy place. It was a designated time that he I mean in the holy place. It was a designated time that he had to enter onto that most holy place. We're talking about your conscience. Your state of consciousness has to change. Still talking about last Sunday class. I heard all y'all. I heard Yahweh talking to me because I am a son and I felt so good. He, he said that you have to die to go to heaven. He's talking about your state of consciousness has to change. When the, the high priest to put on his garments of beauty and glory before he go into the holy place, right? Most holy place, right? That's, that's a changing. That shows that's a changing. That you have to enter on into that that you were promised. He said, that's "I, right. you have to quicken or made a lie." And he also said, he also said, "And you have to translate." That's the one I wanted. And you have he translated into the kingdom. Yes, it's already done, but you have to become conscious of that. You have to die out of your way of looking at what that means. You have to enter on into that. You have to turn aside to see from your own thoughts, enter into the kingdom. What's the kingdom? Where is the kingdom? Last Sunday's class. Where is the kingdom? Stop just reading this stuff in the book. Look at it. Turn aside to see what it's truly talking about. And you have to quicken or you have to translate it already translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Well, where is it? Where do you dwell, Rabbi? How do I get there? You have to die to get there. I'm talking about your way of thinking, your depraved nature. I ain't depraved. Watch it. You better check it out and see. Your way of thinking. What's the word depraved? Can't look up all the words for you. Look up the word to pray and see sometimes if your way of thinking don't fall in that category. That's why you have to die to go to heaven. You have to be fully persuaded is my point, y'all. You have to be fully persuaded and believe and know and understand comprehensively so for yourself. You have to be honest with yourself. In order to be cleaned up, you can't be cleaned up if you don't know where the dirt is. How are you going to clean up if you ain't never looking under the couch to see all of that trash under there? The rest of your house looks clean. It looks fine. Look, look under the couch. Look under the bed. You have to examine yourself. We have to examine ourselves. 
and there's no condemnation in doing that. That's what you have to do. That's what is needful. Right. You find, if I, I find it's filthy under my couch. I ain't condemned by it in my house. I clean it up. Anybody else come here, they don't like to see it, they can leave. But I'm talking about I want it clean, no. Right. So that's why I go under there and I clean it. Right. For myself. I just like a clean house. So that's what you should feel about your own house. Where do you dwell, Rabbi? He told Moses. We were talking, we were going to Moses. That's where I was going. He told Moses to, when he called him up into the mount and showed him and gave him that vision and trans, that vision and revelation later on, but gave him that vision and transformed. He saw Yahweh transform into that super incorporeal shape, shape and form. And then he transformed into that intangible tabernacle, Exodus 24th chapter, thing, 25th chapter. And he said, see that you make all things according to this tabernacle that I showed thee in the mouth. But he told Moses to build me a tabernacle, Exodus 25th chapter, that I may dwell among them. Where you dwell, Rabbi? Now that tabernacle uh, first he transformed in that super incorporeal shape and form in the shape of a man. Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Where do you dwell, Rabbi? He was showing Moses that he was made, that the man was made his own likeness and image and gave him that tabernacle pattern, a vision of that tabernacle pattern in the, in the mouth to show that the man is a tabernacle that Yahweh is to dwell in. But they didn't know that. Until the Holy Spirit was poured out. That's what he's talking about in Jeremiah. I will get in them and walk in them and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Where do you dwell, Rabbi? Stop keeping Yahweh separate from you. That's what that vision was talking about that he showed Moses. That's what that tabernacle was talking about. We get up and we go over this tabernacle all the time and keep it separate from us. This is something that Yahweh gave us to talk about in class. Or to have a testimony about. And then I was listening to the founder on a lecture, the Holy Spirit speaking here last week. He said, Now, you're made in the likeness and image of Yahweh Elohim. He said, Now, we got a doctor. He said, We got a medical doctor here, right in this class. He said, Now, you got a doctor that knows all about the physical body, but don't know nothing about Yahweh. He said, God. Then you got uh, the preacher that knows, says he knows all about God, but don't know nothing about his physical body. That ain't going to work. He said, because you made in the likeness and image of your creator. How are you going to separate him? Where do you dwell, Rabbi? Now, if you got him separated from you, then there's no way for you to believe that he dwells in you. Because you don't understand what it means, him, you being made in his own likeness and image. That's what that tabernacle was telling you that he showed Moses. That's what it's talking about. Not for you to get up and just talk about it. There's a most holy place, holy place, going round about. That ain't just what it's for. It's for you to turn aside to see. Right. What, what is it really talking about? Oh, that's what you're talking about, Yahweh. That's what that tabernacle is for, to show that I am made in your own likeness and image. So that I cannot deny that that's who I am. That's what it's for. Stop thinking it's just giving to you just to be teaching something to show yourself. That's why you have to die out of yourself. Yahweh don't need you. He don't need you to, to teach it like that. It's the Holy Spirit that does the teaching. Right. He said, um, he said in the same SoundCloud number 31, he said, you have Yahweh to demonstrate, see what I'm talking about, his own existence. You don't have to worry we're trying to prove his existence, that there is a God or try to disprove it. It's Yahweh, y'all, that's doing it all. If you go to that, uh, um, AR Asher AR chart. 
And this was just brought to my attention. See, Yahweh, if, if, if we would be still and just move out of the way and admit we don't know nothing, can't do nothing, then he'll open all these things up to us according to his will, according to his time. But we want to put our time on it when we should be seeing something, how much we should be seeing, and all this kind of crap. And all you got to do is be still. First lesson in universal knowledge is to be still. And, and uh, I told y'all once before about this quote that I like that was on a movie. She was telling, there was one that was telling the man, she said, the first, the most important and significant thing of all that you can learn of all is that it's not about you. And that's what, that's what this is all about. That Yahweh may be all in all, and that's all in your mind. And then you can just ride this thing out and live his purpose because it is him in you willing and doing his good pleasure. If that's the case, that means that ain't nothing going on to you. Ain't nothing going on with you. I'm going having such a hard time or, you know, this and that and the other. Well, it's Yahweh in you willing and doing of his good pleasure. So who's going through what? See, these are the things that can keep you Keep that uh, to pass down all the the opposition, those thoughts that are opposing Yahweh. That's these are the things that were given up to keep under our feet. That's where they belong, under our feet. So when they come up, you got something. You have the power in you to put them there. So this Ar Asher Ar chart. That's you right. see the vi the vision up there? It says vision at the top. I never noticed, really noticed this chart. See how it just brought it to my attention, you know, as far as really looking at it. You see vision at the top. And it goes to both ends. You got an arrow pointing down to revelation and delusion. See that? One end, one end of the vision is a revelation. Another end of the vision is delusion. Because like I was talking about earlier, y'all, you have to understand the operation of his purpose, which includes the both mysteries. You cannot discern if you don't have nothing to compare it to, right? So he shows over here to the left on the revelation, and you've got that shape and form of a man. Then you see life at the top on the left side there. And then you see death under the delusion there, right? Both mysteries were necessary are necessary to understand the one mystery of the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose. But it's for you to come to know where you are at all times on within your vision that he's shown you, the vision that he's given you. And another thing, you first, if you read this, if you read the uh, introduction to the first, to the volume, Introduction to Volume Three of the Elohim Book. He starts out talking about divine vision revelations and saying that first, uh, you must believe in divine vision revelation. That's what he's talking about. In order for you to believe any of this, you got to believe that divine vision and revelations are true, or it's impossible for you to believe that Yahshua. And I'm paraphrasing, die for your sins or in the existence of Yahshua, any of, or believe the truth. I'll just put it that way. You have to know that it's according to his purpose through visions and revelation. So what I wanted to point, what I was pointing out in this is the vision encompasses uh, the life and death of the two mysteries that you have to be reconciled in your mind by this pattern, so that pattern that they have there with righteousness, over there, you got that pattern. And if you go to Colossians, uh, and I, I know I'm talking a whole lot. If you go to Colossians, I have to take it as it's coming to me. Colossians 1.15, to show that we're talking about Moses' vision, and instead of just looking at the tabernacle as just being something that we talk about, then we have to understand aside to see the purpose of that tabernacle, right? the tabernacle pattern that is Yahweh that dwells in you. But you have to have the spirit of discernment 
in order to know the difference between life and death or righteousness and unrighteousness. And it's based on this pattern here that he gave us to go by that we talk about the most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. And they're pointing to uh, the operation of his purpose right within this pattern. You know, you got the Sabbath and um, up there in the or the rest, in the most holy place, which is what I was talking about when you can't stand in the holy place, but you have to enter on to the rest, if you will. Uh, I need to slow it down because I'm getting so stressed out. But um, what I was looking at, oh, Colossians 1.15, just to point out this about this pattern that's shown on this chart that I noticed when we were looking at the other day. Uh, and I still got some more looking at to do to see what else y'all has got to show me. But what he showed me about the two mysteries are understood by the pattern here, that tabernacle pattern that he has here. So he took me to Colossians, I think, 1.15. Uh, yeah. 115 through 19. Colossians 115. Who is the image of the invisible L? Start at 14. 14. Start at yeah. 13 if you don't mind. Okay, yeah. Okay, 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? I'm about to fall. Right. If I tell you to go to the next verse, we'll end up back at the first verse. But uh, we was talking about giving thanks unto the Father, and then, then I started yeah. 13. 12. 12. Okay. Okay, where are we going now? 12. 12. Mm -hmm. Giving thanks unto the Father, who hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light. That was mentioned in last Sunday's class, who made us suitable. Who who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? Hath delivered us. Right. Now you have to become fully conscious of that. And you have yes. to become fully persuaded of that in your own mind. Mm -hmm. Not just read it. Right. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Wait a minute. Wait. Yeah. He has <laughs> translated Damn. us into the kingdom. Where do you dwell, Rabbi? He has translated us into the kingdom of All right. your son. Not to just keep standing in the holy place saying, mm -hmm. I know Yahweh. I know mm -hmm. Yahweh. I know Yahshua is in me. And you mm -hmm. just standing in the holy place. You just keep standing there. We got to mm -hmm. move. That's right. Israel had to move when the yeah. cloud moved. That's right. But where did the cloud say he was going to dwell? On the mercy seat. Most, right. Most holy. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible L? the first cause of all creation. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Let's Visible. Go to, let's go with Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Acts 1724, yeah. right? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Invisible, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Whether they be visible or invisible, the means right. of principality. Yes. He gave the adversary dominion over this creation when he cast out over this world, when he cast them out to the earth mm -hmm. to deceive the whole world. That's a dominion. Mm -hmm. And it was of Yahweh. Right. That's why we have to understand the operation of his eternal purpose. That's what the A.I. Asher Tardis was showing, showing both mysteries. That is Yahweh that's controlling both. Mm -hmm. 
He's right. pulling them both for his purpose. Our job is to understand the operation of his purpose. So we won't be tossed to and fro. Read. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Whether they be principalities or powers. Now, he said that he gave the adversary power to deceive mm. the whole world. Right. But, get, but this is what we forget about. See, we always giving him some credit for something. And then just making him just jump up for joy. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm -hmm. But he said, but this is what you have to remember. He gave the sons more power mm -hmm. to overcome him. Mm -hmm. That's right. To overcome mm -hmm. the wiles of the adversary. Then we forget right. that part. Oh, the adversary. Oh, that old devil. He's doing this. He's doing that. I do. <laughs> okay. Remember, remember, remember the former things of old. Remember that he was. That's why you have to study to show yourself approved. Go to the law and the prophets where those great cloud of witnesses are there. They were done. Mm -hmm. All those things were done for our example so we wouldn't fall <laughs> and they fail. So that we can have some faith on this side, some confidence mm -hmm. on this side, so that we can have a comprehensive knowledge and understanding on this side. Mm -hmm. The Messiah poured out his Holy Spirit, which is divine wisdom and knowledge. Where where does that dwell at, y'all? Where 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 is that supposed to be? You said the Messiah is in me. Well, divine mm -hmm. wisdom, divine knowledge to know that. He was raised up, that the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit was poured out. The last enemy that was destroyed is death. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things. That's what he came in to conquer that. And um, so when you see power, you have to remember, y'all, that Yahweh gave him power to deceive the whole world. And Yahweh said, come out of her, my people, people. So you, you will not be a partaker of that deception. Mm -hmm. You just have to die out of it. Mm -hmm. You have to die. He said, love not the world. I was mentioned last Sunday. Yahweh gave his own begotten son so that he could save the whole world. I think that's how mm -hmm. I read but then another place he says that uh, come out of the world. Neither love not the there. world. Neither uh, love not the world. That's right. Love right. not the world. Neither things that's in it. If you're not in line with the purpose from the AR Asher AR chart, if you're mm -hmm. not seeing the operation of both, both mysteries, then that can be confusing to you. Right. Right. It can be confusing. But when you understand the operation of the purpose, of Yahweh's purpose, then you can put it on both sides. You can look at the mystery of iniquity, keep it in its place, and the mystery of righteousness, keep it in its place. That's what the discerning is all about. That's what the gift of discernment is all about. Seven right. name is all about, to discern. In order to discern something, you got to have something to discern, right? So he's the two mysteries are set for you to discern one from the other. He didn't tell uh, Yahshua uh, to tell them, I mean, Yahshua didn't say for no reason at all that we're talking about the principles. We're going back to one word we looked up earlier, you're talking about the principles. What's the principle of him saying those on Yahweh's side get over here and those on, on uh, not on his side? The discerning. The discerning, mystery of iniquity, mystery of righteousness. Moses told them, you know, uh, this, uh, I think it was Nathan, Nathan, Torah, or maybe those that uh, when they came down from the mountain. That's right, Nathan, Nathan, Torah. Right. Okay, but anyway, Moses pointed out that those on Yahweh's side come over here and those that are not. And then the earth swallowed up those that were on the wrong side, if you will. Falling under that mystery of iniquity. Those are what the principles are talking about. Stop making them just stories, you know. Those are principles. The point two, the operation of Yahweh's eternal in you. 
And when we focus in on those things at all times, the things that he has taught us, that the Holy Spirit brings back to our remembrance that he has told us, then we can stay uh, in that peace. We can, we, we can remain in that perfect peace. See, those are the things when he says, he will keep the imperfect peace his mind is staying on me. So we just went over, y'all would just rehearse what it means by keeping your mind staying on him. Understanding Nehemiah 9 and 6. Understanding Acts 17 and 24. Understanding Moses turned aside to see. Understanding the tabernacle pattern was the principle of that he was showing Moses when he showed him that tabernacle pattern on where he dwelled. Understanding all these things. A comprehensive apprehension of these things. And not just things that are just being taught. When you're in school, from a physical standpoint, if you're going to school, and we have a lot of witnesses that can tell you this. Just going to school because I'm supposed to be going to school. You know, now I'm out here on the streets because I ain't got no degree. I ain't got nothing because I just went to school just to be going to school. Then see, understand the purpose of me going to school was to, you got to live in this world, so you're going to need a job. You're going to need to know how to read. You're going to need to know how to add and subtract in order to live just in this thing. You know what I'm saying? So if you find yourself that I was just going to school, you know, I ain't looking at nothing. They sent me to school, so I went. But now, but now he, he, one could tell you, well, if I had paid attention in school and really understood what the, what was being taught me, the importance of it, then I could have gone on to be a lawyer like I wanted to be, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's where we are, where we should be, looking at the principles or looking at the operation of Yahweh's purpose and not keeping them on the on the low all the time, on the end, low end that they're just talking about us learning about Yahweh. We just learned about Yahweh, you know, and we in our mind are stagnated. That's what stagnation is. I'm just learning about Yahweh, and we just keep learning about him. Hadn't really seen the essence of it. The, hadn't really seen the movement that needs to take place in order to achieve that that he has promised. Right. What's the, what's the value? That's right. What's the value? Yes. What's the right. value in it? Mm-hmm. It's, it's so much. It's so much deeper, y'all. That's why Holy Spirit spoke to the founder all the time, especially so much if you listen to some of his lectures close to the end before he laid that body down. I uh-huh. just want you to get a profound knowledge and understanding of Yahweh. Right. That's where we are, y'all. We have to get a comprehensive apprehension of Yahweh's purpose, how it mm-hmm. is, where it mm-hmm. is, or even if it is. Huh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? For ourselves. You can't mm-hmm. keep holding on to everybody else saying, right. well, Yahweh's teaching us through him that this is this, Yahweh is this way, and Yahweh is that way. He we keep being taught about the tabernacle pattern. We keep being taught all these things. And you're holding on to it for yourself. You're not being fully, I mean, you're holding on to it through somebody else. You're not being fully persuaded in your own mind. Mm-hmm. What you have come to is real. How do you know what you have come to is the truth for yourself? How do you know that Yahweh is real for yourself? And this is something Yahweh woke me up laughing about this morning. If you are on a roller coaster, and everybody knows these big, tall roller coasters, you know, if you have experienced it, you know you got to hold on, right? If you have never ridden one and you get on for the first time, the person that's putting you on it is going to tell you, you got to hold on to this bar, right? Uh, so he woke up well, I looked at this this morning I was laughing he said now you got to know something for yourself so uh, Dave was telling me about he this preacher was saying at a funeral he went to yesterday you got to know something for yourself so I was laughing within myself when Yahweh showed me now if you get on a roller coaster does it riding on that bar 
is you to say, hold on to this bar, or someone will instruct you to hold on to this bar. And if you've been on a roller coaster, you know yourself you got to hold on to the bar. But does at any point anybody tell you to hold on to the person next to you? No. You better hold on to that bar. Because the person next to you is going to be swayed to and fro just like you are. You can't hold on to, <laughs> to the person next to you. You can't hold on to somebody preaching this gospel to you like that. That's what I read here a few weeks ago. Last time I spoke was that uh, where uh, the founder was saying that um, the spirit, the gifts, the, the, the gifts that were given. And the one of the most important was the gift of discernment. He was trying to get them to see. He said, all the time you've been into in this teaching since its inception and you've seen the witnesses, you ought to use that gift of discernment to know that you're not that this is not a man standing before you that's been teaching you or telling you these things. Now, if you're holding on to hear and see, you're going to be swayed to him, first of all, because he let Yahweh laid that body down. So you're going to be swayed to and fro. But if you're holding on to the bar, if you're holding on to Yahweh in you and fully persuaded in your own mind, then you got some stability there. I can't hold on to nobody else because that's not stable. Yahweh going to carry through the, them through things just like he's carrying me. So I got to hold on to him. I got to hold on to him with all that's in me. All the strength or the power that's in me. That's what it's for. For you to hold on to that that is true. That that is real. Where do I dwell? Where do you dwell, Rabbi? Yahweh is spirit. The spirit of Yahweh dwells in these vessels. What know ye not that your body is a temple of Yahweh? Moses, make me a tabernacle that I may dwell among them. And then when the Holy Spirit is poured out, you became conscious of that once it was received. That that's where he dwells. That your body is a tabernacle of the Holy Spirit. It's your state of consciousness has to change. Then we won't be tossed to and fro, going about our thoughts. That's the every wind of doctrine, our thoughts about it. What can I do, Yahweh? What, what am I going to do, Yahweh, if this happens, if that happens? What am I going to do? Or what can I do to change it? Or what did I do that, that I could have done to make this different? Or what? No. See, that's tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Your thoughts about it. So what we're moving on into now, we want to enter into that rest that Yahweh has promised us, which he is faithful to. So we have to enter on into, enter into it. So I'm going to go on and uh, yield for now, so many more, so many things, but the Holy Spirit has uh, um, done it just the way it was set to be done today, and I hope that um, it is received by the body from Yahweh that, that he's given today so that we can um, move on into that that he has promised and um, because he is showing us everything that's going on in the world today. He's showing us that that's what time it is. That it's time to move. Uh, and the word, ooh, last week uh, when the speaker spoke about uh, revolutionized our mind. This truth has revolutionized our mind. And I heard a song yesterday where this guy was saying, it's a new revolution. We got to move. He said, we got to move. And I thought, whoa, because that is what time it is. That's what everything is going on, not to make you feel bad or feel scared or to fear. You know, he ain't given us the power of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. Sound mind. Where you won't be moved. 
because we're at the time that anything, everything that we're going through, he's fulfilling what he said. That not only would I shake the earth only, but also heaven. Some shaking is necessary. It's necessary to get us back where we're supposed to be in our mind, in our, you know, the way we're looking at things. The shaking is necessary, y'all. It may not be pleasant until you raise it up, like the first speaker said last week. No, it may not be present, pleasant as far as the physical is concerned. But how can one say, I'm happy? You know, when you're going through all of this seemingly hell, when you say you're happy, you're not down here. You know, we're caught up with those that fell. What is it, David? Quote it for me. Down here with those that failed, but caught up with those that didn't. Right. See, we're in heaven. That's the state of consciousness we want to be in. We want to be in the kingdom, which is peace, joy, and happiness in the Holy Spirit. Not as a damn what's going on, you know, in the physical, what we're going, what we're being carried through. Like that carry. So that means that, okay, I'm just like a babe. In his arms, being carried through all of this crap. But uh, the last thing I want to do is one more thing. Just take about a minute. In the preface of the Holy Name Bible, I mean the Elohim book, the preface of the whole book before the uh, first volume, it's um, uh, two paragraphs I want to read like right quick if I have time, Carla. Mm -hmm. so, Okay, so the preface of the Holy Name, I mean, uh, Holy Name, the preface of the Elohim book, he said the first paragraph I want to read and the last, which is going to sum up everything that has been um, touched on, everything that's, uh, some of everything has been touched on this morning. He said, in the eight year period since the first edition of this book, God, the archetype, original pattern of the universe was published in October 1961. There have been many moment, momentous prophecy fulfilling events and happenings to come. All of these events have brought the whole world near to disaster and ruin and have been an omen of the end of this world and the inevitable revelation of Yahshua the Messiah from heaven. Oh. Where is heaven, y'all? question. Okay. Men everywhere are fearful and trembling in endless meetings trying to get things patched up and thereby avoid or escape their doom. They are altogether ignorant of what is happening in the world and why, but they know absolutely nothing of the eternal purpose and plan of Yahweh. If they were knowledgeable of Yahweh's purpose and plan, they would understand that everything is taking place, that is taking place in the world is a fulfillment of his words and the scriptures contained in the Holy Bible. They would further understand that there is nothing, and this is what I had to come to about Ian being declared from the beginning, they would further understand that there is nothing that any man can do to obstruct to hinder or impede the carrying out of our eternal creator's will and predetermined counsel, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. When one takes a good look at the present world situation, he finds that there is hardly any political, ecclesiastical, scientific, or social institution, racial or ethnic group, or geographical location that has escaped involvement in the violent and turbulent changes that are transpired in the world. Now, don't we all see that? We're witnessing that right now. Right now, everything that he spoke of. But this is the thing that he wrote this for the son to be conscious of what's going on that is the purpose of Yahweh. And nothing can happen but to impede or to change it. Now, the comfort that he gave you is in the last paragraph of this preface because he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, right? 
So this last paragraph, after he talks about the things that are going on in the world, the chaos and confusion, the last paragraph says, it is in the climate of the above mentioned conditions that this second edition of the Elgham Archetype Original Pattern of the Universe is being published. And hopefully we are endeavoring to re reach the masses of the people who are in the doldrums, and that's, that's a depressed state, are in the doldrums of despair and hell. Now we are witnessing that in our day that that's what's going on. He said, no, there can be no drawing back from the inevitable destruction of the world, for Yahweh has purposed it to be so. But it is possible for one to free himself from the bondage of sin and ignorance and to come into the ark of safety in the glorious liberty of the sons of Yahweh. No one in his right mind could think that the world is going to go on and on and that eventually peace and harmony would prevail. So yeah, we can give that up. If any of y'all are, think, are thinking that, you know, the fire is one of those fiery darts that can cause you to think that if anybody is thinking that eventually peace and harmony will prevail, you can hang that up, okay? He said, for this has never been the case except for very short periods of time since man has been upon the face of the earth. It is the mercifulness, Miranda, mercy and grace. It is the mer mercifulness of Yahweh to provide a way of escape out of this doomed world. And we should be eternally grateful to him for this precious salvation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to end it on that, y'all. I'm happy and I'm glad that Yahweh is the one that's in control of everything and that he has made me to know and to understand. And I thank y'all and may Yahweh continue to bless. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Very good. All right. Um, Class again, my name is Carla Carter. I'll take the last few minutes of class. With the time that we have left, I want to say I thoroughly enjoyed the words of the Holy Spirit through the um, previous speaker. Again, right on time with everything that Yahweh has had me looking at as well. Um, just to kind of bring out a couple of other things that the first speaker talked about, what Yahweh shared, well, showed me, and hopefully he'll allow me to get it out. If we can go back to... The scripture lesson, this is what stood out to me. Uh, one of the things that stood out to me, go back to the scripture lesson, First Thessalonians 5th chapter. Uh, let's see. We'll start at the first verse and then we'll go down. I don't have much time, so we'll skip around a little bit. Okay, First Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Wow. Ye are all... Wow. Now, sometimes we get caught up in looking at these things that we're reading as something so far off from us, way on down the line. We're in the day of Yahweh right now, mm -hmm. yesterday. And it's not just some one event way on down the line. Even within your own self, you're not in darkness that the, that day should overtake you as a thief if we are ever conscious that we're in that day right now then these things wouldn't be able to overtake us and start bringing us down the way that they bring us down but it's for a purpose though in order for us to see where we are so we can move but like the first speaker was talking about and i know exactly where she was i've been going through the same thing all those thoughts and the 
you know, the Messiah complex, thinking you as a person or you as a daughter can do something or should do something or shouldn't do something because mm-hmm. you want to protect mm-hmm. that that you're looking at. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. You shouldn't be looking at what we're looking at. You know what I mean? But that's not my point. So that's right, though. We are children of the light mm-hmm. and of the day. The day, not days, but the day. Right. Who's the father of the light? Who's the father or the source of the light or the source of the day? If we're the children, then we, we've got to be the same as the source. That's anyway. So let me keep going. Mm-hmm. Therefore, what now? Sixth verse. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us. So, watch. therefore, hold on. I'm so sorry. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. It's hard as crap to sleep during the daytime, ain't it? <laughs> let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Mm-hmm. Free. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. So what do you do in the morning when you, for Romans 119 and 20, what do you do in the daytime when you wake out of sleep? What is the first thing you're going to do to start your day? You're going to get up. When you get up, what you gonna do? You're gonna put your clothes on. You're gonna be clothed. You ain't gonna walk out the door naked. You're gonna put on that breastplate of faith and love and the helmet. What does helmet do? It protects anything from damaging the brain. For that most holy place. And the hope of salvation. Why is that? Ninth verse. For Yahweh has not appointed us to rest but to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. So if that's the case, then comfort yourselves. You ain't got to look for comfort from nobody else. Mm-hmm. Comfort yourselves together and edify one another. Even as also ye do and read. We beseech you, brethren, acknowledge them which labor among you and are over you in Yahweh and admonish you. And esteem down to the... I'm sorry, I don't have a whole bunch of time. Let me keep on down. 24th verse. This is what stood out to me. 24th verse. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren. Now, call. Oh, it's, in the, it's in the law, it's in the prophecy, it's in the fulfillment. Faithful is he that calleth you. When you look up faithless, the one who sticks to the script. He's loyal to what he promised. Faithful is he that calleth you. And not only do he call you, but he will also do it. When mm-hmm. you're going through the things that you're going through, it may look like it's for one reason. Mm-hmm. But Yahweh is calling you by name to get your attention so that he can do something, work or work in your day. Don't be told you, you wouldn't believe. So he can do something. To bring you closer to him. He's going, he, he's going to call you by name and get your attention, but he's also going to do it. What am I talking about? What are you talking about, Carla? If the proof is in the pudding. I'm going to show you this. So even from Romans 119 and 20, in school, first speaker talked about being in school. There's something called a roll call. Mm-hmm. Before, school, before school is even starting, there has to be a roll call first. And what is the roll call for? So the teacher will know who is what? Present. Present. And what do you say when the teacher calls your name? Here, 
Shear. <laughs> H-E-A-R. <laughs> Hear when oh. he speaks to you. And the things that he... Exodus, third chapter. We're going to... third. I ain't got that much time, but we, we have plenty of time to do what we need to do. Exodus, the third chapter. We're going to give out the law first. And then we'll go to the prophets. And then we're going to go Exodus, the third chapter. Exodus 3 and 1. Um, hold on. Uh, so I'm, y'all have read this a million times. Let me just get to the point. Okay. Um, 3 and 3. Exodus 3 and 3. And Moses said, mm-hmm. I, I, will know, I will now, gosh, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush does not burn. Can and anybody when, tell me does anybody think that this was about the bush? No. Was this whole thing that Yahweh took Moses through about the burning bush? No. Can the first speaker yeah. tell me was it out was it about her mother being sick? Did it have anything to do with that at all? Okay. Did it have anything to do with Isaac, with Abraham? Did it have anything to do with what it appeared to look like or the Truly. first thing Yahweh used to get your attention? It had nothing to do with that. Right. But the burning bush is what Yahweh used to get his attention. And then right. what happened? The fourth, fourth verse. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And, and he, he said, said here. <laughs> here. <laughs> Here. Roll, right. This is roll call. This, Moses yeah. has a role to play, but Yahweh is the one that's doing it. Here am I. Or you need to start asking yourself moving forward. Am I here? Am I here? Am okay. I present? Am, am I, I present I, with Yahweh? Am I attentive? Yes, yes. And he said, what? Don't come no closer. Take your shoes off your feet. He said, I am the element of Abraham, Isaac, and all that. Mm-hmm. He said, I've surely seen their affliction. I am come down to deliver them. So he called him, and Yahweh also did it. He is faithful that called you and will also do it. Do it. He called Moses by name. Here, here am I. And he performed and did it. It had nothing to do with Pharaoh. It was about Moses' round trip. He said, because this shall be a token unto you, Moses, that I have sent you. When you bring them out of Egypt, you shall worship me on this mountain. And by the time they got back to that mountain, Moses and Yahweh were one in the same. But Moses had to go through some things and see Yahweh perform. Moses had some things he had to go through first. Now, if you go to... um, Exodus 35 and 30. Well, 35 and a, a few verses above that. We come over Yahweh, the same one who calls, the same one that does it. When he calls you or gets your attention, he's also going to do it, right? Let me show that real quick. 35 and 30. I ain't got 30. 30. 30. 35, Exodus 35 and 30. And Moses said unto to the children of Israel, See, Yahweh hath called by name Bezaleel. He called the of- them by name. He, everybody right. he calls, he calls them by name. He called them by name to do what? Build the tabernacle. Right. But he filled them with his spirit, and it was him that did it. Right. He is the one. All right. Go to First Samuel, the third chapter. We're talking about the same one that calls is faithful, and he also will do it. First Samuel, third chapter. First Samuel three and one. And the child Samuel ministered unto Yahweh before Eli. And the word of Yahweh was scarce in those days, and there was no prophetic vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim 
that he could not see. And ere the lamp of Elohim went out in the temple of Yahweh, where the ark of Elohim was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that Yahweh called Samuel. And he answered, Here am I. Here. And he mm -hmm. Yahweh called him. Mm -hmm. And this, guess what? When it happened, because the, the light in the temple had went out. There was no light in the temple at the time. And the word of Yahweh was very scarce in those days. There was no open vision. So initially, when Yahweh called Samuel, he said, Samuel, he said, here, he went to the man. He went to Eli, thinking that the man was talking to him. Right. We do the same thing when we sleep, when the light goes out on us. We look at the flesh, thinking that somebody else is doing something to us, or somebody else is can help us. Or, oh my goodness, the doctor's I need to talk to the right doctor. I need to find the right doctor to go do this. I need to get the right medicine. Oh, we got to eat the right food. Oh, 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 oh. Breathe. Good, Father. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And Yahweh called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know Yahweh, neither was the word of Yahweh yet revealed unto him. Now that and was his excuse, what's yours? Hold on, that was his excuse. He was a child. The word of Yahweh was not yet revealed to him, it's been revealed to you, what's your excuse? Why do we keep on looking at the flesh? Read. And Yahweh called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that Yahweh had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Yahweh, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel now, went. Now, well, Paul, wait a minute. Yes. Now we had the A C R E at first. Here am I. Now he said, next time when he, if he calling to you, say, speak Yahweh, for mm -hmm. thy servant A C -E A R heareth you Yahweh. And so Samuel went and laid down in his place, and then what happened? Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak Yahweh. For thy servant hear it. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and Yahweh came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant hear it. And Yahweh said, to Then, him, hold on. And Yahweh came and stood, stood where? He wasn't outside of him standing. Mm. Mm. Then Yahweh, now, that Samuel is open and looking for Yahweh to speak, mm. then that's when Yahweh stood in his conscience and called unto him like he did other times. And now Samuel is conscious that it's Yahweh in him speaking to him. And he said, speak for thy servant spirit. Mm. We have to start looking at Yahweh in everything. Stop giving Satan credit all the time. Mm -hmm. That's mm. why your feelings keep getting hurt. Read. And Yahweh said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which God dog, it, you better wait a minute. He called and he also do it. That's right. Moses by name. Moses said, Here am I. I Yahweh will come down and deliver them. He called and then he will do it. And so the one that he calls that he does it for is for them to know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua. So the things that come up in your life that seem to trouble you, that you're looking at in the wrong way, when Yahweh shows you what it is that you need to do and he stands in your conscience and calls unto you by name and you hear him and you are present where he is, then you will see Yahweh work that thing out exactly the way it's supposed to. Whether he takes the flesh off or not, Yahweh will still 
give us comfort. And he will still do the things that we need him to do because we all got to get up out of here in the first place. That's right. We can't keep That's holding right. on to the flesh like that. That's why he take it away from us in the first place. That's right. Not to hurt us, but to save us. Read. And Yahweh said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. Everybody that hears this thing that I'm going to do in Israel, I, Yahweh, will do. Everybody ears are going to tingle. Everyone that heareth, not everybody, but everyone that heareth it, that ears shall tingle. In that day, I, Yahweh, will perform. Mm -hmm. I'm out of time. Acts the ninth chapter, please. This is after Yahweh knocked uh, the apostle Paul, Paul the Saul down. And Yahweh was getting ready to bring him on in the fold. Acts 9 and 10. I got five minutes. Acts 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. oh, over here. And there was a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And Yahshua said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, sir. Here, present, here, or H-E-A-R-I, here, you Yahweh. Yahweh said unto him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here. Mm -hmm. Read. I am here, sir. And Yahshua said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tarshish. For behold, he prayed and he hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Sir, I have heard by many of, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to the son, to thy sons in Jerusalem. Paul, wow, don't we do it? Don't we do it? Don't we do it? Don't we do that? I'm gonna put our little bit like I thoughts on it. Yahweh, Yahweh told you to go to, to straight to go, right? Called you, called you by name, and I, I don't know about this, Yahweh. I heard many things about this one here. I don't know about this one. This one was low down to me last time. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yahweh, I don't know about this doctor because this doctor, I heard uh, people at my job said that this doctor didn't know what they were doing. Hmm. Or Yahweh, they told me if I go to <laughs> New Orleans, it's a doctor over there that can help me because the doctor over there in New Orleans helped so and so, so and so, so they can help so me too. So. All right. Yahweh, I don't know about this. I only got five dollars to my name and I know I, I, I can't afford to go to this. I want to go. But I don't think I can go. Yahweh, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. He calls you by name for a reason. So that he can do it. Not you doing anything in the first place. Read. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. It's scary. If I go, Yahweh, if I do what you told me to do, this man might put me in jail. Shoot. But what did Yahweh say to him? But Yahshua said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before nations and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for, for my name. I sake. will I will show him. <laughs> you right. don't have to show him anything, and I I Yahweh am gonna I call and I will do. I will, the so roll call, this is the role that I want you to play, Ananias. I want you to go down there and put your hands on him so he can receive his sight. But I, Yahweh, will be doing all of it. It is Yahweh right. in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. But guess what else? It's Yahweh and everything else both to will and do of his good pleasure. Stop giving Satan power and thinking that Satan got so much power. Man, Satan, I go Satan again. Satan trying me. They no <laughs> Yahweh is uh, cleaning Yahweh cleaning you up. Yahweh showing right. you what's still in you. That's Yahweh. Right. That's right. 
Yahweh moved David to number Israel. But right. you'll read one place where Satan provoked David to number Israel. It was Yahweh. It's always been Yahweh working both mysteries. Right. And it was a great big mystery until the day that Yahweh revealed it unto us. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy and glad. I thoroughly enjoyed class this morning. I pray that y'all will mm -hmm. allow you to start hearing him when he yeah. calls you by name. And when mm -hmm. he calls you by name, what he is do the way he does that is putting different situations on you, whether it's back to back. It could be something as simple as you're not getting your food right at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. It could be something as simple as your tire went flat and you're running late for work. It could be something as simple as that. It could be something as simple as, as something as simple as you got constipation and you don't know what you're gonna do. You just took your medicine, you feel constipated. It could be something as simple as you got run, you got the run and you want to get out the toilet, but you can't. So since you're down there, might as well pull your phone out and read a couple things and Yahweh show you something while you don't it's, it's just look at Yahweh in every oh. last thing that goes on here. Right. Right. Am I here? Am I here? <laughs> Am I hearing him? <laughs> Hear, oh Yahweh. Hear Yahweh, oh Israel. Right. Yahweh, right. my Elohim, is Yahweh a unity. A unity. With those words, I say hallelujah. 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 <laughs> All right. Are there any questions or any comments from anybody on Zoom or YouTube? Uh, just one comment. And uh, uh, I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed uh, class this morning. But um, let me say, when we, in every situation, we need to be looking at Yahweh. What is, what is Yahweh doing? Uh, example, uh, my car has stopped on me Thursday morning. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, Shirley, I just laughed. <laughs> I was at a stop sign uh, running, trying to get to work. And I was at a stop sign. And just when I was going uphill, it started chugging. Get down. Got to the stop sign. And usually it'll, once it stops, I, I turn it off and it'll start back. But it didn't. <clears throat> So we're looking at every uh, situation that Yahweh put us in. And just for you, <laughs> you all to know, um, I st my car stopped up the hill from David and Shirley Cole's house. And I couldn't do nothing but laugh. So Yahweh, look at you. So I called my son-in-law. He came on. He brought somebody with him. Mood, sorry. You know where I went down and shared in David and talked to David and stuff while my son-in-law then was working on the car. But what we're saying, do you hear <laughs> Yahweh? In every situation, the car stayed there overnight. My son-in-law got somebody to tow it. I took it to the dealership. I got a rental car. Do you hear Yahweh? Are you listening? Are you present in this that he is doing? Do you see the magnificence of it? Because even with the car that I rented, I had to take it back because something was the first one was wrong with it. That was Friday. Then I went back and got another one and I come back and something was wrong with it. It had the windshield was cracked and, and the lady that gave it to me, she didn't notice it, I didn't notice it. So I took it back yesterday morning. But Yahweh, no, I didn't crack that windshield now. So it didn't mean me to worry. See, they gonna think that I that I cracked that windshield and I'm trying to bring this, I'm trying to bring this uh, car back and I, oh! And when I took it back, the lady said, well, we're gonna have to check and see if that was notated on when the car was returned, I got a problem with that. Do what you do. My father, Yahweh, has is ruler of heaven and earth. So all the no matter that and I know somebody said that ain't a car stopping. Yes, it is. It meant a lot to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it meant a lot to me. Went down there to, I called Dave. Tell me, good morning, girl. How you doing? I said, I'm standing outside your door. 
<laughs> he said, let me come out there and see. And he came up. I, I thought it was kidding. So no matter how, what, when, or where, it is your way. I mean, that don't seem like nothing. May not seem like nothing to some, but it, it's a lot to me. It's a lot to a son. I stopped. I went and I called Charmaine. I said, look, I'm running late. She said, do you need me to come get you? First, I said, no. My son-in-law coming. Then he was there with the car. I'm down there talking before I got to David. I said, I called Char uh, Charmaine back. I said, come get me. Yeah, well, provide a way. What you moaning and groaning about? Charmaine came and got me. I went to work. I worked that day. My daughter came and got me from work. What the? I got home safe and sound. The car is in the shop. And whatever they say it is, that's what Yahweh say it is. Because uh, David and I were talking and, you know, the car had been doing this for a while. See, Yahweh is justice to give you a warning. There is a warning shot. There is a if you're hearing, he told me something was wrong with the car. You should have got it taken care of. So don't be blaming y'all. Y'all, when you let my car break down, I told you this car was acting crazy. Now you got this fee you got to pay before it. I had the money to pay it to get it towed. So I'm talking about in all things. You know, no matter mm -hmm. how we looking at it, no matter how you looking at it, it is your way. Now this car been doing this. Okay, that's on me, y'all. Well, you right. You you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> it's been it's been acted up. I should have taken it when I could drive it. But don't need me to be blaming y'all for this. You let my car break down. No, you didn't do what I told you when I told you to do. You didn't. You didn't answer it like Sam uh, did. Here am I. Yes, sir. What you trying to show me? Like Shirley said, ask a question. Y'all, what are you trying? What are you trying to show? I'm sure you need to take this out to the shop. But it is, it is beautiful once you, like we said, you come on up into the Holy of Holies. Because that's your destination. You can have some peace. You can have some joy. You can have, because it's Yahweh that's doing his will. And that way we can have some some confidence, some confidence. So again, I have thoroughly, um, and like um, said by the first speaker, if you go back and listen to some of these classes, because you know we get a little sidetracked or distracted and stuff, and you may keen in on be able to keen in on some things. Because like me being a scripture reader, sometimes I don't hear all the context of a thought. I'm trying to find a scripture or something, but just go back and listen. And that's Yahweh that has given us that too. Um, your little phones, you can go back and listen to it. For us with smart televisions, you can go back and listen. You can listen at work in your car. So uh, what Yahweh has done is taken away all our excuses. Uh, so um, I have, I really, really I thoroughly enjoyed everything this morning. And uh, like all other speakers say, all I can say is hallelujah. All right, have a good Almighty provider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, any other comments or any other questions? Yeah, I got a comment okay. I wanted to uh, add to what was, uh, was already gotten into, and this is just to slam the door on uh, what was said a few moments ago in, bar in regards to giving the adversary power. Um, the introduction to the to volume one of the Elohim book. I thought sure that's the one she was going to, but she went to the other one. Um, the introduction and down through that first paragraph, it says, and this simplified, it is this simplified panoramic vision and revelation of the divine pattern of the universe given to me by Yahweh Elohim. Uh, you can look right there and see Samuel receiving something just like H.C. Kenley is receiving something, right? Which I have, as well as Paul and the rest of them, which I have expounded upon through charts and writings to my associates 
which in turn has qualified them to detect, identify, and to prove the existence of Yahweh and the satanic mystery of iniquity, and to trace the mark of the beast, which is the adversary, from its origin to its final conclusion, the lake of fire. Now, in regards to what was said about giving the adversary power, when you, when you, when we realize, and this is what we have to realize, we're in the Holy Spirit. And when the Messiah went to the cross, died, buried, and resurrected, poured out his Holy Spirit, walked around with him so they could see him, poured out his Holy Spirit, and then went on to sit on, if you will, the right side of the Father. He is the head of the body, and we are his body. And you are in him now, whether you're fully aware of it or not. So he, the, the head and the body are together, and in that he has already given you or shown you that you have the power to trace the mark of the beast from its origin now. And that's something, when you look at this Ayah, Asher Ayah chart, that we'll Yahweh willing, we'll get into that sometime. You can see it from what the vision that we was given. How that he, you can see the origin of it as well as his final destination, which is the lake of fire. So be of good cheer. What you've come to is reality of all things as well as eternal life. And that eternal life is just you having a mustard seed of faith to believe that Yahweh is real. Then that knowing comes forth, come forth as you continue to go on to know that he is and there is none else. So uh, I thoroughly enjoy things as well. Uh, we always do. And this day that uh, that the that Carla was referring to, the Holy Spirit was speaking of, and I have to say the Holy Spirit was speaking of because that is the teacher. But that day that, that is being spoken of I used to speak this word all the time, and I'm hoping it be received in the, in the instance in which it's being received, in which I'm trying to give it. When you speak of Yahweh with a conscious realization of him being in you, you are not on this earth plane. That's an impossibility. Now, what are you talking about now? You sound like you're talking some crazy talk. Now, I want you to know that your consciousness, as far as heaven is concerned, you're being translated. And the more you translate it, the more you exercise in this knowledge and understanding, the less this world means to you. And as we read the letter by Dr. Greg Ocean that was talking about Yahweh being your every thought, if he made the statement that no one knows, knows the day or the hour, but Yahweh himself, don't you see you don't have to be Yahweh in order to know? You're going to have to be that. See, and, and Yahweh never lost a thing. He's not a respective person, people. He's never been a respective person. It's always been about his spirit. But you have to come to this realization. You have to come to this understanding that he is real now in you. That's why the Messiah manifested in a physical body, which for you to see and to, and to know that you too, as he's as, as it's spoken by, by, by Saul many times, beyond controversy, that it was Yahweh in the body. And I'm just repeating what's already been said. It was Yah, it's Yahweh in the body now. And he's the one who is carrying out his own purpose unto ontological perfection. That's why you can't hinder, obstruct, or impede anything that's going on. All the best you can do is get in line, if you will, or understand where you are in the, in the pattern, in the purpose. And that will give you the ability to put the satanic spirit under your feet. But that's where he is anyway. You just have to come to that consciousness. Yeah, he's going to do what he's going to do. That, that's a given. He has to in order for the purpose to do what he's doing. For those to know that it's it's both Yahweh is operating both mysteries. You gotta have something to discern. 
anyway, um, it's very important that you understand that it's him carrying it out himself and not the man. That it's Yahweh himself in his tabernacle. It always has been. And when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, understanding that uh, it, <laughs> we all got to leave here, that's what we're doing now. The dissipation, as it dissipates more in you, the more you realize that it's not, it's not the reality of it anyway. That it was Yahweh in the body for a purpose to do what he needed to do. And when he fulfilled that purpose, he stepped out of it. He's, off, he's done it all the way down through the ages of dispensation. And you ain't going to lose a thing. It's impossible to lose when you have Yahweh. With that, I say mm -hmm. hallelujah. All right, hallelujah. Very good. All right. Any other comments? Any questions? So go and read again. Maybe. You want to read, Miranda? Yeah, carry to move while supporting. Transport to convey by direct, get this, to convey by direct communication. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that word. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that word. <laughs> but to move Even while from, supporting. I mean, you're being, Yahweh is the one that's supporting you. You're talking about to carry, carry me through to move while you're moving, but you're to move while being support by supporting your transport to convey by direct communication. I like that word. I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Last class where it talked about those weights and exercises it says Gary also means to support the weight of he's the one carrying the weight, carrying the burden. He's carrying the right. weight. Isaac had to carry the wood on his back. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yeah. Okay. It Very says good. To, in, to influence by mental or emotional appeal. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Well, we'll do the announcements. The announcements are the same. We do have class every Sunday from 10 a.m. to noon Central Time on Zoom. We do stream live on YouTube for those sessions. Um, if you want to join any of the sessions, you can email us at Meridian Soul, S O H L, at gmail.com or IDMR Meridian MS at gmail.com. And then I can send you the Zoom link to join us live. Also, we do have our event coming up. It's um, Mississippi Soul Food Gathering in Gulfport, Mississippi, June 20th through 23rd, 2024. It is free to register. There is an international airport um, in Gulfport, Mississippi. If you want more information, go to our website at soulfood.org. It's S-O-H-L-F-O-O-D dot O-R-G and click on the event. And you can register for free there. And you also have two phone numbers there for the two different hotels with, to have a group rate for um, the event. So whenever you call to re reserve your room, just give them the name of the event. And you can get the group rate three days before or either three to and or three days after the event on top of the days of the event. All right. If there's nothing else, we'll conclude with the doxology taken from the last two verses of the Book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 Good day, everyone. Mm -hmm. Good day. Good day. Peace, peace. All right, bye.